In this video, we're going to explore rational solutions to a pretty interesting exponential equation. My original goal was to find all such rational solutions, but in the end, I think that's a little bit too tricky for just one video. Maybe post in the comments if you see a way to find all such rational solutions. I'm not sure I know one just off the top of my head. So instead, we will find some rational solutions to the equation x to the y equals y to the x. Before we get started, I want to make some observations that will simplify the starting point. So let's notice x comma x. In other words, if y and x are the same, then that's clearly a solution. That's because we've got symmetry built into this equation. Furthermore, if x comma y is the solution, then so is y comma x. Again, that's because of the symmetry here. So that means we just might as well look at the case when y is bigger than x. And furthermore, we'll take both of them to be bigger than zero just to make it work a little bit nicer. I'll let you guys think about what might happen if we let them be negative. Okay, so let's get started. So let's suppose we have a solution. So we know x to the y is the same thing as y to the x with y bigger than x bigger than zero. So now let's take the log of both sides, which is a standard kind of trick to reduce an exponential equation to some other sort of equation. So taking the log of both sides using logarithm rules, we'll have y natural log x equals x natural log y. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of a trick using the fact that y is bigger than x. That means that y can be rewritten as a times x, where a is bigger than 1. Again, what is a? Well, it's just going to be y over x, which is clearly bigger than 1 given this inequality. Okay, so now let's plug that into our equation. So let's maybe have a purple arrow and we'll underline this in purple so that those are linked. And we'll see that we have ax natural log of x equals x times the natural log of ax, like that. So now let's notice that some stuff pretty easily cancels. So we have this x will cancel with this x, so that's good. And then we can use logarithm rules to bring this a inside. So that's going to give us the natural log of x to the a equals the natural log of ax. Then from here, since the natural log is a one-to-one -one function, that tells us that x to the a is the same thing as a times x. In other words, x to the a minus 1 is equal to a. But that means we've got a value for x. So notice that x is the a minus first root of a, or in other words, it's a to the 1 over a minus 1. And then furthermore, we have y is equal to a times that. So we have y is equal to a times a to the 1 over a minus 1. So there we've got a parametrized solution, which actually works for all values of a which are bigger than 1. And then furthermore, if a is equal to 1, we get this solution again, which was given right here. And if a is less than 1, then we just switch the values of x and y. Okay, so now the real question remains is when is this a to the 1 over a minus 1 a rational number? So let's put when is that a rational number? And we'll investigate that on the next board. So in the last board, we found out that our equation has a parametrized set of solutions that take the form a to the 1 over a minus 1 and then a times a to the 1 over a minus 1 for a bigger than 1. And this is going to be for all real numbers a bigger than 1. But that gives us real solutions and we want rational solutions. So that kind of finishes us up with the question, when is this object a to the 1 over a minus 1 a rational number? And personally, I played around with this a little bit. And, you know, I'm known to miss simple things every once in a while, but I think this question is fairly hard. I think maybe it's not super hard to find some places, the obvious places where this is a rational number, but to prove that those are the only places, I think that's the hard part. So let's find the obvious places where this is a rational number. 
So this is obviously going to be a rational number when 1 over a minus 1 is a natural number. I'll just call it n. Well, notice if 1 over a minus 1 is a natural number, then a is clearly a rational number, which means we have a to the n, which is also a rational number. So now we just need to solve this for a in terms of n, and we'll have some sort of idea for the shape of some of these rational solutions. So let's see, maybe we could invert these. So we'll get a minus 1 equals 1 over n. But let's see, that means this, that a is equal to n plus 1 over n after giving ourselves a common denominator and stuff. So let's see, that means this solution set right here takes the following form. So we're going to have n plus 1 to the n over n to the n. That'll be this object after doing the substitutions that we've just built. And then we'll have n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n to the n plus 1. That'll be this term. And now this is going to be 4 n n natural numbers. So let's look at a couple of cases of this and see what it looks like. So let's see, when n is equal to 1, what do we get? So we'll have 2 to the 1 over 1 to the 1, so that's just 2. Then we'll have 2 to the 2, that'll be 4. So we have 2, 4. Let's make sure that makes sense. We'll notice 2 to the 4 is 16 and 4 to the 2 is 16. So we're good to go there. Now let's look at the next one, maybe n equals 2 and see what we get. So that'll be 3 squared, so that'll be 9. Over 2 squared, that'll be 4. And then this will be 27 over 8 for the next one. So that's another rational solution. And you can check that that works as well just by plugging it in. Then we can get an infinite family of rational solutions just like this based off of these natural numbers. Now, is that all of the rational solutions? Well, I'm not so sure. And I think that question, like I said, is hard to answer. If you have any ideas, maybe post it in the comment. And that's a good place to stop.